Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. Yes, today I am going to try to make one of my tutorial videos in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not very hopeful that this is going to work. This sim has given me a lot of grief, very unstable, still full of bugs. But when it works, it does look very beautiful and so I thought, well, let's give it a go. If it doesn't work, we'll just switch back to good old MSFS 2020 and carry on from there. So what is today's video all about? Well, some time ago I made a video about the descent management and descent planning. And then I sort of glossed over how to fly the ILS, but there were a few people in the comments asking me about the ILS. At what altitude do you put flaps 1, flaps 2, the gear, etc, etc. So I thought maybe I should have gone into a bit more detail about the ILS and the descent planning on the ILS. So I'm going to do that now. It's probably going to be a bit of a shorter video, but I'll show you how I personally fly ILSs in the real world. Of course, as we will discuss in the video, this always depends on several factors, but I'll give you a rough guide that I always use and that uh, seems to work pretty well for almost every single approach. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are here in Auckland, in New Zealand. We are flying in Air New Zealand Airbus A320 with Sharklets. The aircraft is quite heavy, we have a lot of people on board and as you can see here we still have over 4 tons of fuel. This is on purpose because I want it to be a bit more difficult. So first of all, before we get started, what I'm going to tell you now is a very rough guide. Something I personally use as a rough guideline to get me down on the ILS and to the runway in a safe and uh, comfortable manner so to speak. There are many airports that have very specific speeds that they want you to fly. So you need to stick to those. Heathrow, for example, is a very good example. And uh, yeah, there are many others. So you need to look up in the charts if there are any specific speed limitations you have to stick to. Because if that's the case, then of course that has to take priority. So for us, uh, we are now on a downwind leg. We are simulating that we are being vectored by ATC. They've just told us to descend to 3000 feet. We're still flying at 250 knots and the idea is that we will perform a left turn onto the ILS here, intercept the ILS and then come back down here. There's a speed limitation here for 170 knots. Of course, in the real world we would be flying this, but for this particular video I shall ignore this and I will just tell you what I usually do if I fly into an airport without any specific speed restrictions. So first question, we are flying 250 knots, we are now going towards the ILS, when should you start slowing down? Well, for me personally, again this is dependent on things like wind, traffic, etc. Uh, the very latest when the final approach fix here is in the 5 nautical mile ring, that's when I start slowing down. And my initial speed on the A320 is usually 210 knots. So we'll do this now as we're approaching the 5 mile marker, so slowing down to 210. ATC is now telling us to perform a turn to the left and they've told us that we are cleared for the ILS. Okay, so we are now on lock star, so the aircraft is intercepting the localizer. The final approach fix is coming within to the 5 mile range. We are ready at 210 knots, so that's a very nice good speed. We keep the aircraft clean for now because it's a bit more efficient and produces uh, less noise. So we just wait now till we are nice established on the localizer. I usually wait till I'm uh, around about 12 miles away from the touchdown zone, which is around now. And at this point I say, okay, flaps one. And I keep the 210 for now. You can see the glide slope is coming in. That's very good. So we can now start reducing to 180 knots. 
The aim for me is to join the glide path with flaps 2, because if you join it with flaps 1 and the aircraft is heavy, it's actually really difficult to uh, slow the aircraft down. So ideally I want to be at flaps 2 just as I join the glide path and this is what we are aiming for now. We are passing 10 miles, at 9 miles the latest I want to be at 180 knots. Glide slope star and now we do flaps 2. And with this configuration you should be fine. Uh, so the aircraft is now in flaps 2 which uh, generates quite a bit of drag and it usually doesn't uh, speed up anymore even though we are descending. You can now dial back to 160 knots. Do that here. And I usually keep 160 knots until we are 5 miles away from the airport. Now someone asked uh, what altitude should I do all this? I'm gonna be honest with you, in the real world we do not use altitudes because each airport is at a completely different altitude and then um, altitudes become meaningless. If you approach an airport that's at 5000 feet and you're used to putting the gear down at 2500 feet then you will be landing with gear up. So to us this is really the most important thing and this works at any airport regardless of um, height of the threshold. We're approaching 6 miles. For me, 6 miles is when I put the gear down. So around 6 miles, I command gear down. So we put the gear down, this adds a lot of drag. You will see the aircraft is now going to slow down to 160 knots. We are already approaching 5 miles. This would be a good time to go back to approach speed. I haven't actually put in anything into the MCDU, so we just do 140, you would now basically go to manage speed here. But if I would do this now, the aircraft would go to 250 knots. Once the gear is down, you just go all the way to flaps 3 and then flaps full. And then you are fully configured for landing. You may remember in the video where we talked about go rounds at 1000 feet above threshold we should be nicely established and stable and this will exactly achieve that. By 1000 feet will be on glide, on localizer, on speed. The engines will give us in an appropriate uh, N1 and so now we are nicely established. And we have flown almost the entire approach with the engines either in idle or a very low N1, which is what everybody wants to see. This uses less fuel, this uh, produces less noise and is better for the environment and of course everyone living around near the airports. And with that we are on the ground already. Sorry about the poor performance. I always have this. I don't know why. When I'm in the air it's actually quite nice. I get like 30, maybe 40 FPS. But once I start to come into land it drops to something ridiculous. And uh, it actually makes landing really difficult in this sim. In any case we are on the ground. So just to sum up. You approach the final approach fix and once you are close enough, let's call it 5 miles, you slow down to 210 knots. You leave the aircraft clean for now if the weight allows uh, because you don't want to cause too much noise above the ground. Once you're on the localizer and the glide slope comes in you go to flaps 1 and reduce the speed to about 180 knots. By the time the glide path intercept happens, you should be at 180 knots and at flaps 2. That will ensure that once you go down the glide path, you're not going to accelerate the aircraft. 
At six miles I usually put the gear down. Once the gear is down I follow it by flap three, flaps full and that will slow down the aircraft to a point where at 1000 feet which is where you should be stable at least in my company everything will be perfect and then all you need to do is land. The landing checklist comes straight after flaps full followed by the VLS check. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the VLS check. If not, we, we can talk about that in a video. And uh, that's all there is to do on the bus. And then you just land the aircraft. So that's essentially how I fly the ILS. Be aware, airports like Heathrow, uh, other airports as well, even Mallorca, they tell you that you have to fly 160 knots until 4 DME. If this is the case, I will keep the 160 knots dialed in and fly with flaps 3 gear down until 4 miles out and then once I pass 4 miles I'll go to manage speed which means the aircraft will slow down and uh, command flaps full. In this case you may be slightly above the approach speed at 1000 feet but this is allowed uh, at least according to our OMA we can then be stable at 800 feet because this is something that ATC or the airport authorities want us to do and you just can't continuously do go arounds because the speed doesn't fit the company profile. So that's roughly how that works. We've discussed flap 3 approaches already in one of my videos so you can adjust the procedure then very easy you just finish the procedure with flap 3 be aware the aircraft will not slow down as quickly if you fly in a flap 3 approach so you might want to put the gear and the flap 3 down a little bit earlier maybe at seven miles to give the aircraft a bit more time to slow down and that's essentially it for the ILS it's really not that difficult there are certain exceptions to the rule I have flown into airports where the ILS was not a 3 degree glide but a 3.2 or 3.3 degree glide. In that case I would actually join the ILS at 160 knots with flaps 2 and then once I'm on the glide path I would put the gear down otherwise the speed will just run away from you. Uh, so these are things you need to adjust, you need to be flexible with these things, this is just a rough guide. But if you fly your standard ILS 3 degree glide on a nice sunny day, this will always get you down and you will always adhere to all the speed limitations of Airbus and the airport. Be aware of your surroundings, there are other aircraft, there's wind, look at the wind, where is it coming from, is it pushing you? If you have tailwind, maybe do everything a little bit earlier. Uh, if you have headwind with a very low ground speed, you have a little bit more time. So these are things you will learn as you fly and as you get more and more experience. But initially this was the guide I was given and I have to say it has served me really well. Even now after all these years and all these thousands of hours, I still use that rough guide for my approaches and then adjust as needed. And uh, yeah, it's, it's working really well. And I hope with that I have uh, sort of answered your questions about the ILS, when to put the flaps down, when to put the gear down. Once again, we do not use altitudes. Makes no sense because really if, if you want to have a guide, oh at 2500 feet I put the gear down. Well first of all you need to add the altitude of the airport on top of that which may be something like I don't know 2375 so you have to do that calculation and um, you may actually have a hilly terrain before the airport so the aircraft doesn't actually show you the height above threshold but above terrain so it, it's too messy and uh, too complicated just use the miles they will always remain the same regardless of where the airport is located and how high it is above uh, mean sea level and that seems to work really well okay short video yeah microsoft flight simulator 2024 i'm still not convinced this uh, i had to start this twice the first time it didn't work and the performance is still all over the place so i think the next video will go back to 2020 and we'll give it a bit more time maybe one day they'll actually get this to work properly okay that's it 
Well, I hope you found this short video interesting. I hope I was able to answer the questions of the comments. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.